You guys must see this. In our ever-growing collection of ant colonies in my ant room, we call the Antiverse, we have seen our fire ants, named the Crimson Knights, devour whole chicken feet. Armies of polymorphic marauder ants create long transport chains, dragging food back home. Fledgling ant colonies like our newly rehomed Murano Plus bicolor ants, named the Spades, drinking from their drops of honey, our pseudo-cannibalistic Dracula ants, fattening their young in order to take their young back home to drink their blood. Even a colony of an ant species that we may have been the first in the world to discover, farming their pet herds of mealybugs to source their highly coveted sweet honeydew. It is without a doubt incredibly intriguing to just sit and watch our various pet ant colonies feed. But one of the most underrated ant colonies of this channel, in my opinion, under our care, that totally deserves more recognition are these supremely unique ants, which have some of the fastest and most powerful appendages in the animal kingdom. Trapjaw ants. These ants get their name from their signature serrated mandibles, which can open greater than 180 degrees, between which exist little trigger hairs that, like a trigger in a bear trap, once touched, cause the mandibles to snap shut with tremendous force, instantly delivering a lethal blow or deathlock upon any prey that might be unlucky enough to be a victim of its clutches. The jaws shut at 230 kilometers an hour, which in case you can't imagine it, is deadly fast. However, we've already watched these ants kill things before on the channel. So today, we're going to watch them do something a little different and witness a side of these fearsome looking beastly ants that we usually don't get to see, which is watch them communally feeding. They act differently than most other ants, and you're about to find out why. Our trap jaw ants since their last dedicated video over eight months ago has grown so big now, and I felt it was time to return to their mighty forest kingdom we call Aranyani's Bend to check up on them and see what the colony's been up to. Ladies and gents, let's gather round, put on our best protective head and body gear, and get up close and personal with our menacing but beloved trap jaw ants as they feast on a huge roach carcass like a hungry pride of lionesses here on the ants canada ant channel please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon welcome to the ac family enjoy ac family sometimes i forget just how awesome our trap jaw ants are now I know you guys seem to really love the other more popular ant colonies, like our fire ants or our marauder ants. Or it could be that YouTube only seems to want to serve you the videos on these trending ants. So guys, if you haven't been seeing the videos I upload every Saturday in your feed, please make sure you're subscribed to the channel and hit the bell icon for notifications with the option all selected so you don't miss any video. Hitting the like button every time also helps YouTube know that you really like these ant videos and want more in the future. Hey, if you have time, I also ask you to take a moment to create a repeating notification on your mobile calendars set to every Saturday, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you always wake up on Saturday mornings to a happy reminder to catch our latest epic ant video. To start your weekend off right with the positive vibes of the ants of our Antiverse. All right, but guys, in today's video, aside from learning a bunch of cool things about our trap jaw ants, I'm going to be needing your help and asking you a very important question regarding the fate of these ants. So as usual, do stay tuned until the end for some collective AC family participation coming up. Now let us begin. Every morning at sunrise, marks feeding time for our bustling trapjaw ant colony. And this morning, I creeped up to look into the action happening at Aranyani's Bend. It may not seem like much is happening when you're watching as a giant, but down at ground level, a feeding frenzy of jaws on roach flesh is taking place. Within the shadows, a massive freshly killed roach still breathes its remaining breaths of air as a swarm of hungry trap giants begin with the dissection. 
These ants use their powerful jaws to chop off chunks of flesh to take back to the nest. At first there are only a few ants on site, but just wait until later when you see the full swarm coming to feed. This colony which only started off with a few members has really grown well into the thousands now and are eating a lot. This here, under a large driftwood piece, is one of the several sets of openings to their underground nest. Ants emerge to communicate with ants coming back from the feeding site to learn more about what's on this morning's breakfast menu. Not without returning ants, also leaving a pheromone trail all the way back home to direct incoming ants to the food. While watching them feed, I love admiring the shape of their body. Their design is amazing. Smooth, shiny, mostly hairless exoskeleton with all their muscle packed into their heads to drive their powerful mandibles and their thinner gasters, each of which house an equally powerful stinger for killing prey and self-defense. Our trap jaws here seem to not be using the snapping power of their mandibles at the moment. Instead, focusing on pulling off meat and lapping up the roach juices with their smaller, more delicate sucking mouth parts. Now I feel the swarm of ants here are torn between consuming the food on site and actually carrying the entire chunk of roach back home. I always chop up my roaches when feeding the ants because I feel it speeds up the death process of the roach, but also makes it easier for the ants to consume and get to the goods within. Now aside from the ants feeding, I also loved watching the trap jaw ants foraging and wandering around their territories. Here's one ant scaling the rocks, looking for who knows what, probably food. While other ants are exploring the driftwood pieces, our trap jaws have really settled in well to the grand home we made for them eight months ago. This here is the giant driftwood piece under which the trap jaws have chosen to dig their extensive subterranean tunnels. It has become a monument in these lands and an important structure to their nest. I suspect in the wild, these ants also love nesting under large structures like this, either decaying wood, tree roots, or stones. So a little about these ants. Trapjaw ants belong to the widespread genus Odontomachus and can be found in the US, Central and South America, Asia, Australia, and Africa. They are a tropical subtropical species and like their environments humid, warm, and moderately damp. I find the ants to be pretty smart individually, and each seems to be more independently thinking than usual. Interesting to note that when I give them freshly killed insects, they totally skip the burying process, which is what most ants do to make the food less sticky. These trap jaws prefer to get right to feeding. I think they still can't figure out if they want to drag this piece of roach home or not, but watching this colony, I always notice that these ants act quite differently than most ants. They're smart, individually. It's almost like you can see each one thinking for itself, possessing less of a hive mind type operating system. While watching the ants, I suddenly took notice of a little white movement. Hey, cool! A baby isopod! This tiny creature is an ally to the trap jaws, and though the ants may eat other creatures its size, they generally leave these isopods alone. They are important for cleaning up the mess and waste the ants create and leave behind. Speaking of which, AC family, I think you'll truly find this crazy. Look at this. The colony's graveyard. This is the place the dead ants are placed. The garbage site is right next door, littered with the remains of past meals, exoskeletons, and discarded uneaten wings. With all these leftover decaying bodies and insect body parts around, as you can imagine, it is home to a host of scavenging and decomposing creatures like mites, springtails, isopods, fungi, and whatever that thing is there. I wonder what's rummaging under all those ant cadavers. Any guesses? 
Whatever it is, your guess is as good as mine, as the creature never emerged from beneath the bodies to show itself. Nevertheless, since this entire terrarium kingdom has had the time to age, it has truly grown in awesome bioactivity, establishing its own biological equilibrium and food chain, which is fascinating to watch. Alrighty, C family, speaking of watching, let's take a few moments to watch the ants feasting on their roach. The full swarm has finally emerged. Enjoy these few moments of ant watching now, as the pride of ant lionesses come out of hiding to feast. Wasn't that cool? And so relaxing, guys. All right, EC family. Now, as mentioned at the start of this video, I'd be asking you a very important question. And it's this. It's time we finally give this underrated ant colony of ours an official name. Time to vote. Under the pinned comments of this video, I have listed my top five favorite name suggestions from you guys in their last video. And to vote for your favorite, just simply hit the thumbs up on the name of your choice. You can even vote for more than one option if you like. And the name suggestion with the most likes will be the new official name of our beloved Trapjaw Ants here to be announced in a future video. Guys, I must say, it means a lot to me that you guys have allowed ants into your hearts. To the almost five million of you around the world, cheering them on and following their stories Thank you all so much for watching. This week's episode is a really chill video for a change, and it means a lot to me and to the colonies we care for that you join us on this never ending journey as colonies like our trap giants here rise to glory, living out their best lives under our love and care. Though they might not be the most popular ants on the channel, I feel they're still one of the most interesting of our ant colonies and not to mention easiest and lowest maintenance ants to keep. And you know what? Sometimes chill and easygoing is a gift in a world that can sometimes be chaotic, challenging, and unpredictable. That's why I love ants, like these trap jaws of ours, and I will continue to document their growth and development as a colony over time. I still have some questions about them, like do these ants actually reach into the millions or have they ultimately reached their peak population size? I wonder what their nuptial flights will be like, and if the queen has already started to produce elates within their nest. I'll be sure to let you know and report back to you all again in the future on what new and exciting things I learn about them. So until we return to visit our trap jaws here in Aranyani's Bend, thank you all for watching and supporting the ants.
It's Ant Love. Forever. <laughs>